Mike O'Mara Radio Entertainment. The Mike O'Mara Show is brought to you by Sleep Number. Find your Sleep Number setting today at any of the 425 Sleep Number stores nationwide. Find one near you by calling 800-511-0061. That number again is 800-511-0061. Don't forget to tell them that Mike O'Mara sent you. Available on demand every day in iTunes and the Google Play Store and around the world on MikeOMaraShow.com. What more can we do for you? It's the Michael Mara Show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a poem. Thank you, Rob. You're welcome, Mike. <clears throat> it really seems like an hour ago that we were kicked out the door. Our radio home for years and years didn't want us anymore. Oh, it's a rhyming poem. Can I start again? Start, stop the music, for okay. Christ's sake. Is this in iambic <laughs> pentameter? I don't know. No. It's a rhyming poem. I thought it might be free verse. Ah. No, it's not free verse. Because, you know, and then the is, what we could do, we could be at the coffee shop, and when he's done, we could go. And you know what worked All for right. me? I was I was going to cue him on just the music, and then I wanted to turn it up, and he thought <clears> it was a cue to speak. Ah. That's what I thought. And he ruined it. Well, All right, <laughs> start again. Really, let's start, it's show start, business. Start, start again. Just the music or the show? The show. From the very beginning. Now, okay. do you want Rob? No, no, we don't. Do you want? Do you want Rob to talk at all? Well, not. I mean, I'm reading a poem. Okay, I know, but, but how what do you we want did is we, we set it up. I've been working on it for for a long time. Okay, <laughs> but do you want him to introduce you? Okay, Ed. No, it, I don't. It doesn't need to be introduced. Okay. The music introduced. So, I want him to turn the music up. All right. Take two. No Rob. God damn it! Hi. Hey, Oscar. Happy anniversary. All right, Thank you go. too. All right, all right, here we go. Are you ready? Yep. We're, we'll do the stager into it, so it'll be nice and tight. Thank you. Okay. It's the Michael Mara Show. It really seems like an hour ago that we were kicked out the door. Our radio home for years and years didn't want us anymore. Was this the end? Did we have a friend in the world of radio? What would we do? Where would we land? We didn't know where to go. But uh, much like many people... God damn it, start it again. Oh, really? Oh, no. No, I'm going to start it from the very beginning. I thought it was great. Thank you. Okay. Really, you want like the stage to again, too? show again, but I'm... <clears throat> no, no, no. No, no, no. Okay. You got this. <laughs> All right, here we, we go. Do. Take really? three. Here we, go. here we go. Get ready, America. It's the Mike O'Mara Show. <laughs> it really seems like an hour ago that we were kicked out the door. Our ready home for years and years didn't want us anymore. Rob is mouthing the words to it. He's memorized it already. <laughs> Was this the end? We have a friend in the world of radio. What would we do? Where would we land? We didn't know where to go. But much like many people in our national recession, we had to reevaluate and fight through our depression. The radio world that we all loved had left our style behind. Mm. The writing clearly on the wall, and it didn't look real kind. But in our hearts and in our minds, we knew one thing was true. The thing that got us up each day was broadcasting to you. So we had a meeting. We all sat down and Oscar had a plan. Podcasting was the way to go to reach our every fan. But I wasn't sure I wanted to take our show online. That's what Rupert Pupkin does, and he's out of his mind. <laughs> no, Mike, this is going to work. I know it, O would say. If you have a doubt, just take a look at Corolla in L.A. Ah. So we jumped in. We pulled the plug. We decided to give it our all. The thing that mattered most to us was talking to you all. From the very start, it became quite clear that one big thing was true. We had a partner. We had a friend. And that friend was all of you. Some of you have been with us for our entire run. Some of you are newbies to our little land of fun. The biggest surprise is something that all of us hold dear. And that's your listener passion that grows each passing year. Without it, I'm sure we'd all be done and know how much we're grateful. We love you guys, every one of you, even the most hateful. <laughs> yes. So I will stop if I go on. This poem will get too sappy. But before I'm done, I should mention one. You know her name. It's Cappy. Nice. Woo. 
You all may never know how much she helped our cause, but she is someone without a doubt who needs some big applause. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. Woo! Hell one, yeah. One thousand is a milestone, especially for us. So pass the word to all your friends and get them on the bus. TMOS is here to stay, and we will bring the funny. As long as you all do your part and spend your hard-earned money. (laughs) Tomorrow is another day, and trust me, we'll be here, hopefully with some new friends who will give us all an ear. This thing we started can be a part of your life, if you all can let it. But you already know, this is your show. Why? Why? Because you get it. Yeah! Thank you very much. That's very cool. Start the show, Rob, you hum. It's the Mike O'Mara Show. You can listen to the Mike O'Mara Show at www.mikeomarashow.com. Stay tuned for an outstanding entertainment program. It's the <laughs> Mike O'Mara Show. Let's get down to business. From the entertainment capital of the world. Governor Tuck, I should have expected to find you holding Vader's leash. I recognized your foul stench when I was brought on board. Charming to the last. Since you are reluctant to provide us with the location of the rebel base, I have chosen to test this station's destructive power on your home planet of Alderaan. No, Alderaan is peace, but we have no weapons. You can't You will possibly... prefer another target, a military target? Then name the system. I grow tired of asking this, so it'll be the last time. Where is the rebel base? Down to me. There. You see, Lord Vader, she can be reasonable. Continue with the operation. You may fire when ready. What? You're far too trusted. Are you all right? What's wrong? I felt a great disturbance in the force. As if millions of voices suddenly cried out in terror and were suddenly silenced. I fear something terrible has happened. I've been waiting for you, Obi-Wan. We meet again at last. Your power is a weak old man. You can't win, Darth. If you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Coming to you live from Mike O'Mara's living room studio in the historic radio district of Manassas, Virginia, a bustling suburb of the nation's capital, it's the Mike O'Mara Show with Rob Spiewak and Oscar Santana. And now, let's get started. Here's Mike. (laughs) (laughs) Interesting choice for show number 1000 with you, Rob Spiewak. There's a small uh, story behind behind it. That is the last wacky tape we used to open our last terrestrial show. Oh, really? And it was sort of gutsy, I thought, on my part to, uh, upon being firing, say, if you strike us down, mm-hmm. we'll come back more powerful than you can imagine. Yeah, it's, and if only it was true. I know, I know, I th- and we're still holding on, maybe for show 2000. We are live from the Cappy <laughs> Fiber Studios. This is the Mike O'Mara Show, broadcasting live all over the planet. We are powered by Encore Insurance Services with over 22 million downloads, probably 23, but we haven't counted in a while. I got 29. We're at MikeOmeraShow.com, and we are heard over the air on the mighty 1630 KCJJ in the heart of the heartland. Go Hawks! Oh, hi, Jan. The Mike O'Mara Show is a daily radio show and podcast with the greatest listeners in the world. Why? Mike, I'm wondering why. Because they get it. Oh. Now, uh, we're doing something very, very special for our Friday bonus show, and uh, we need your help. We're going to enlist your help. This is kind of tied into show number 1,000. Yeah. And uh, we need you to turn this around very, very quickly for us because uh, we're going to be taping our show tomorrow, the bonus show that will hit on Friday. We ask each person to just take a moment, and that's all it will take. And uh, I should probably do this again. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Ah, oh, nice. Well, the big, Billy Big Voice guy has to come in. Yeah. Okay. Attention. <laughs> Seekers of knowledge. <laughs> Are you curious? What? Well, then, this is great news for you. In observance of our 1,000th episode on this week's TMOS bonus hour, your questions. Okay, very oh, cool. Your questions. Ballsy. Yes, after 1,000 shows, we entertain you now. We'll entertain your questions. Now, listen, a lot of people give us heat about 
all the uh, different incarnations of the show, people that have come, people that have gone. We're going to answer your questions. We're going to pick the questions that we think are the most interesting. Right. And we are going to deal with those. That's the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'll do that on the bonus show. Love Got that. no problem doing that. We will do it. After 1,000 shows uh, where we entertain you, now we will entertain your questions. All we want you to do is email your question to questions at com. That's questions at com, And we would love you to send along anything. They can be silly. They can be heavy. They can be personal. Sure. It doesn't matter. You know, the bottom line is, I'm not going to lie. You know, if it's something that's ridiculously personal, we're, we're not necessarily going to, right. uh, you know, keep that on. But we're going to do the best we can. Right. We will answer as many of them as we can on this week's bonus show. But let me tell you, this is a very, very quick turnaround. A lot of people listen to this show two days later, three days later. We'll put it online as well so of we course. can get your uh, get your questions. We'll put this on our Facebook page once this media blitz day is over. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm, you know what? My, my Facebook is uh, sort of cluttered with a certain hashtag. Thanks to celebrities like Mark Rippon, Super Bowl MVP, and uh, Tony Perkins of oh, uh, so Fox cool. 5 for uh, passing along TMOS 1000. We'll answer as many of them uh, as we can on this week's bonus show. So get involved, satisfy your curiosity, and get inside the heads of your favorite mirth makers. <laughs> Do you know how Jesus. fun it is to type stuff and know oh, you're going to have to read it? Your questions... <laughs> This week on the and then he and then he he gets so energetic about mirth makers that he writes this week on the T N O S bonus hour. Ah. Yeah, oh yeah. Nike O'Mara. Yes. <laughs> did you see that when no. you printed it? No, I did not. It's right there, Rob. He's What's like, it? I'm gonna slay. You know T-N-O-S. what that was? You know what that is? It's a typo- alcohol. No, a typographical error. It's alcohol. Is I was not is. drinking this morning. You weren't. All right. No, uh, you wrote it this morning. Of course. Okay. <laughs> no, I wrote it weeks just like, ago. Just like VCU, right? What? You got an hour before class. <laughs> if I went to class. Lay, lay it all down there. Uh, mostly I just sort of slipped into the professor's door. Go welcome. Rams. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. Welcome to our uh, 1,000th episode. And uh, we are, uh, somebody hipped us to that. I'm not a big anniversary person, so I don't uh, I don't make uh, that big a deal mm-hmm. about things like this. But we got talked into it because we thought it would be a really cool hook to get the show uh, mentioned online and to get the word out. And a really nice excuse to do what we normally do this time of year, which is a new list initiative. This is a variation of that. But 1,000 shows is nothing to sneeze at, and we are very, very psyched that you guys have been along for the ride. Uh, I'm meeting new friends through this show every single day uh, with this whole Facebook friending that I've been doing lately, and it is really terrific to be, uh, you know, doing our 1,000th show, and we've got many more to come, and we're very, very excited. Big changes coming up in uh, the year 2014, and uh, we're we're psyched. We're very, very pleased and uh, thrilled that we've uh, done 1,000 shows. Time blew by. Uh, I think about three weeks ago, uh, you know, Chris Yoko said, one of his friends mentioned, hey, they're coming up on the 1,000th show as a, a fan of the show as well. Right. And he said they should do something special. And, you know, for, for the incarnation of this program, at least, as far as anniversaries come and go, uh, we really let uh, the show speak for itself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but because we were coming up on our new listener initiative, it was a perfect play to do something like this. And I got to tell you, and I'm sure you guys feel the same way. I can't speak for you. But when I woke up this morning around 7 and I started seeing the, my feed full of people that not just have used hashtag um, TMOS1000, but also have created their own little memes, their own little graphics. Yeah, so many. To share, whether it's on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook. Um, it's it's uh, humbling. It's really what it yeah, is. Yeah, we have fun with that poem at the beginning, but it uh, echoed a lot of the thoughts of all the guys, the the way we feel about it. And uh, the big difference that we talk about on this show all the time is the passion of the listeners. And uh, when, I, when I include that hateful uh, point there, uh, with this TMOS 1000 initiative, uh, you know, it's brought everybody's come out of the woodwork yeah uh, even the haters that listen every day mm-hmm. and i'm grateful i i think it's you know the, a long time ago uh you know when you get popular on the radio you you realize that uh even the people that are going to bitch about you every day are going to uh, listen. listen to you every day. And we're we're grateful for everybody sure. that's into this show. And it's really been a, a lot of fun watching people come out of the woodwork and get excited about this. And we talk about the difference between this incarnation of the show and previous incarnations of the show. It is the passion. It is the only thing that has sustained us, uh, which is the, the people are so into this, where they actually uh, you know support people that advertise on the show and they do it almost like a personal favor. Yeah. And if it's a you know if it's a great advertiser and thank God we've had good relationships, that's a that's a bonus too. So we're we're really really just uh, amazingly humbled and grateful that we are able to take something that we did from scratch. Yep. 
We did this on our own. Everything that you, uh, you know, we're speaking to you on equipment that we have hand purchased. We are uh, speaking to you from a studio and from whatever studio we do where we set the equipment up. We put the cables in. We do it all. And, you know, for years and years and years, 20 years in my case, I worked for radio stations where my job was to get out of the car, walk in, uh, turn on the microphone and talk. And, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's what Don and I did. That's what I did after Don left. And, you know, now the, the difference is... Uh, from a business standpoint, from a technical standpoint, it's all done by us. Right. We do it all, and it's just a thrill. And and I find, I, I know you find this, Oscar, uh, and, and you too, Rob, that that the other stuff that we involve ourselves on, uh, you know, whether it's uh, copywriting, whether right. it's, you know, going out and meeting with the advertisers, whether, you know, it's so new because it's all us this all Mm -hmm. it's our one-stop shop and it is liberating because it has freed us from the shackles of uh of corporations which you know to me is worth the hit that i've taken financially because i love that if we have an idea if somebody comes in here like the tmos 1000 thing yep the idea is discussed among three guys oh that still would be tied up in corporate if we oh, tried to do absolutely. that if we they, tried to do that on terrestrial radio and they would say wait because we've got to sell it to this person right and we've got to bring this person up when we have an idea uh we're going to go through our uh, top 10 moments and things that, that we like about the show uh, when we have an idea for the show, when we have something we want to do, we just pull the, the trigger on it and we see. Make it that, happen. And it, look, and if it falls flat, it falls flat. But the fact is uh, we let you decide and we, we have a great time doing it. So you know, much fun. And no, you say the liberation, but also I never have I felt more connected to our listeners. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and they're more like uh, supporters and family and almost partners in the endeavor. Because now more than ever, we realize if not for the guys that consume the show, yes. the show ceases to exist. It, and I have so to true. be and probably more than... And they are so friendly and so in on it and so much. Mike, they so truly get it. They really do. Probably more than uh, you guys, I have to be kicked in the ass to recognize that fact. Believe it or not. I'm sitting there when we got What the are you last... doing after the show? Because I can help you out. <laughs> I'm sitting there uh, with the snowstorm coming in. And uh, I there was a thread about the snowblower. Yes. I think I put something up about right. the snowblower. And I, I don't even track with it. I don't even track with how part of the consciousness of this. And I said, oh, somebody, I said to Carla, I said, uh, some some guy wants me to put a video up of me, uh, you know, blowing the snow. And Carla says, you have to. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know. yeah. We've been doing a joke for four years. They want their payoff. <laughs> really? We, 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 there's no punchline. we got to do it. It yeah. is really, uh, it's really fun. And, and uh, then I get to the process of doing this every day. And no matter what's going on in my life, Coming in and uh, and doing the show it is so liberating. It's so uh, therapeutic for me to do this every day. And I didn't know that. I didn't know that for years and years. Believe it or not, I didn't know it. Don talked about it a lot. Don yeah. talked about the fact that he loves radio. You know, this is what he's all. He loves what he does. And I didn't know how much I loved it. And maybe because... I, you know, was for years and years and years the, you know, in the second chair, and I never really thought about it as much as I should. But I, uh, after being kicked to the curb by CBS, when it was and, taken away from you, yeah. and even more so after doing the podcast and a morning show here in Washington D.C., that's uh, during the time I was doing that morning show is when I realized how this incarnation of what I I do is what where my passion lied. That that's where I really wanted to do it. Uh, you know, this is no offense to anybody I worked with good people over there on Jennifer Street when right. I worked with uh, Kenny King and Kirk McEwen. But the fact is, I would be driving from that show because of all the different crap you had to do, all the different hoops you had to go mm-hmm. through. And I would be I couldn't get to this house fast enough I know. To, to, to be with the people that got it. And it started with the, all the people in this studio getting it. And then it moved on. You know, it, it, I guess it translates to the listeners. Just tremendous efforts made over Genesis Street by people like, like Jeff Sham. He can't you gotta do it. Gotta let it go, uh, man. Right. Uh, Jeez. And you know, Sham- four years later. You know, I talk to Jeff Shamrock almost every week. Do you really? No. <laughs> I don't know if he's alive or dead. I'm pretty sure he's alive. Okay, thank you. His you, big holiday's coming up, St. Right, Patrick's yeah. Day. Your trek home from Jennifer Street in the heart of D.C. Mm-hmm. It was part of my top ten. So is mine. Yes. There's one particular moment that I pull away from it. I look forward to seeing if it's the same well, moment. Well, we're going to go through and uh, and get to you know all of our top ten moments on the show because there are many little things that uh, that I liked about it, many things I 
I didn't like about it. No, uh, but no, no, no they're pros and things. cons. <laughs> what we're talking <laughs> no, about? Don't get happy. I'm not putting cons on. In a no. general thing, when you talk about how great it is to be here, when things were at their worst, when we were at 10800 Main Street, we always had the four hours a day when we could key the mics, and we've talked about it in private and on the show. Those four hours that we were on the air almost made the rest of the BS worthwhile. Right. Almost at the end, because that was truly the happy time, is when we got to get on and do our, our fun stuff. And when that was taken away, I thought, God, that's really what I miss. Mm. It's not the business of radio. It's the entertaining that we did. And I was shocked when we got here and set this up with our new incarnation and to get to know Oscar and be, to have the honor, and that's literal, to sit next to Oscar. Well, we went through the same thing. thing. It's better now than it's ever been. I refer to it as, um, you know, in the in the poem a couple of times. But mm. just to give everybody an idea of, uh, of what happened, it, you know, like people get fired in every business in the world. People get fired in broadcasting more than any other business yeah, in the sometimes world. Sometimes five. Yeah, it, it happens, five times. It happens Since the beginning the of this podcast, ten people have lost their jobs. The thing about what we we dealt with, and this is not a pity party. I'm not no. going to do that. But the thing that made it so excruciating for our last months at uh, WJFK was the fact that they just, in the world of broadcasting, I, I only know radio, so I can only talk about mm -hmm. radio. But the way they do it in our business, and, and maybe they don't do it at other radio companies, I don't know, but I think they do. Oh, every, they, every they city just, I've been fired from, they, that's what happens. They dick around, and they dick around, and they dick, and there are meetings, and there are secrets, and there, and all we have done, now, now we're not, you know, it's not like we're going into work every day and giving them cause to fire us. We're going in every day, and we're working our asses doing off. Doing the job they're paying you doing for. Doing the job we're paying Mike, for. The it, only thing we ever did is everything they asked us to do. And it's not, but that's not on any noble thing. Because no. We do it because we are, it's fear of getting fired. That's our job, but we, there's nothing we didn't do. It's the ultimate fear. So the thing that makes the, uh, in my case, uh, somebody, I haven't been canned a lot in my career, and then to have it happen uh, in. twice in three years, Ooh, look at you me. know, with and, and twice in the exact same way mm -hmm. where it was a major format change, uh, that's frustrating. Yeah. I don't take, I took no solace in the fact that, you know, you would say to people, they flip the format to sports. That's no, that was no consolation for me. That was a situation where I said I was fired. I was canned. If mm -hmm. I had done better, we wouldn't have been, and you cannot, I I could not in any way take away from that experience anything other than that. Right. That's the way you felt. And the thing about it that made it, and I look back on it, and the thing that made it excruciating was the not knowing. Mm. Not knowing on a daily basis, hearing the rumors. And it happened to me twice yep. in short order That's where you, you hear the rumors, you hear the rumors, and, uh, you know, I, I suppose it's probably giving you an emotional crutch that you can prepare because you know the, the writing's on the wall. But still, you but, know, right till the but very But if you end. hold out hope, it's not a crutch. Now, the My variant, question for you yes. is when you finally found out, and you were the one that informed me that we were all... I pushed the issue. We were we were removed. My question for you... the issue. I had to practically scream to mm -hmm. get them to say that. And the, you know what my confirmation was from what? CK over in, at WJFK? Right. It wasn't my decision. That was it. That was not. It was not your. No one ever said. They never to me, said yes. You're out. Okay. You know, no one ever said that. They got away with that. And I don't mind the secret meetings. I don't mind the format change. That's broadcasting. Right. That's the way it goes. What I did mind, and I will always uh, mind, is at the very, very end. Mm -hmm. No one had the balls to call anybody into an office. Sit them mm. down and say, "Listen, this is what we're going to be doing." Because nobody had the stones, right, right? And and unfortunately, our business, at least my own personal experience with our with our business, is they don't just tell it like it is. We're big boys. They don't respect the fact. My God, in my case, that I'm you know twenty years in this business that that I could handle. And that was that is if if anybody asks me about. What is the toughest part of uh, that experience at WJFK? It was right at the end. It was right oh at the God. end where, Tedious. where I really had to, uh, you know, I I can't give you all. I won't I won't betray some of the confidences sure. that I've had in people because some of the stuff that was said to me for the purpose of watering down the fact that we were getting the boot mm -hmm. was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even necessary. And people offered up these insights about their future with the company. And, and I didn't want that. I wanted I wanted just, uh, you know, here it is. You've done a kick-ass job. We're going in a different direction. It sucks for you. I know yep. that. Thank you very much. And that's it. And then 
so they didn't give you the respect to do that, and then at the same time, they want you to do a farewell week. A week. They and wanted I'm, a week of and shows. And I said, fuck you. Hey, 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 the language. <laughs> How in the name of God do I do I come in after? And you know what? And they here's a little bulletin for uh, all the broadcasters out there. You want to get uh, you know the last week out of somebody, make them part of the process. Treat them like grown-ups. Exactly. And, uh, but don't, uh, you know, at the very end, screw people like that and then say, we want you to come in. The, the idea of a format switch, the idea of generating more revenue because you were going to have a kind of a national sports rollout. Right. Um, that is that totally logical it to Makes me. sense. Always has been totally logical. I can understand. Did I agree with it? No. Mm-hmm. But did it make sense? It does. Absolutely. And, and they have proven it. They've proven the fact that the ratings have stayed in the shitter. Excuse right. my language. Wow. i got to do it again. <laughs> but the fact is they have. And the revenues have gone up. And that's what they were looking for. Right. They knew that they had to make some changes to, to improve the bottom line. You have to respect that as a, as a broadcaster. That also came, uh, as far as the company's concerned, you know, not to get too inside radio, right? I would say that the writing was on the wall, and uh, you know, I make a joke about being fired or formats flipping uh, five times, but it's true. Um, in that incarnation, as far as my career is concerned, uh, I always said it's always easier to get fired the third and fourth and fifth time or sure. format flip because you're kind of used to it. You went through more of a you know your own painful little situation because you were. You know, you were you had a, a broadcast partnership that yes, was uh, destroyed yes. in the process. Yeah, very tough. Uh, luckily, we were able, you know, to work together again. But mm-hmm. overall, I, I would say that when it was happening, once the rating system, the way they measure the shows, once that changed, mm-hmm. where it was just rewarding what was mass appeal mm-hmm. and passive radio, and you saw that creeping across the country, and that was the radio file, anyways. But I also. When you've been down the road with a format flip or a move, and you're just waiting for the other shoe to drop, right? You look for it, right? Mm-hmm. But once that little meter came out, the personal people meter came out. Mm-hmm. I said, "This is it's going to be vanilla from now on." Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're going to do don't offend. Make sure you know what's coming up. Uh, stream of consciousness is gone. No, uh, you're not going to be able to do that. Now, you got certain little themes that 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 make those meters move that you have to yeah. talk about all the time. Personal and people not- meters have guaranteed that you will always have. 35 days of Christmas music every year, because that is exactly (laughs) what it is. a good example. It is. We are so blessed to, one, be on KCJJ, uh, Mm -hmm. a station that also gets it. Uh, You know, he's uh, the the little engine that could. He's not a little engine. He's he's got a very, very powerful uh, radio station out there in Iowa, Steve Bridges, and he's got a very, very uh, significant following out there and a tremendous rating that he's had for a very, very long time. And he is a guy that totally gets it in that... uh, and uh, you know, I'm telling you, it's just, it's astonishing to me that we've been with uh, Steve and all the people at KCJJ for as long as we. If have. If you love hot talk, there's only a, a handful of places you can find it now on terrestrial radio. Right. I would say it's online where we are. God, thank the stars, the way they align somehow. Where you and I, Mike, after my, I think thirteenth call to you. Uh, mentioning the word podcast, <laughs> finally connected. Well, it took 12 calls before he remembered who you were. Yes. Oh, it was that, not necessarily kicking. That brown guy. <laughs> it, it, it was a show before. It, it wasn't kicking and screaming, it, it was, but it was definitely a sell on your part. You had to convince me yeah. of it. As far as your participation like date. with us, yeah. uh, you know, you didn't have to sell that because I was a fan of your work before that. Yes. So that is what I wanted as well, and I was I was ex- as excited about that. The podcast, I had to be talked into it. I well, really you had did. to have first be explained what it was <laughs> <laughs> on that note we'll take a break we will come back with more on the michael mary show we got a round table coming up with yes. our uh, top 10 favorite moments on the show we'll be right back after this welcome back to the michael mary show we are so thrilled to uh, have sleep number on yeah. board with us and i am thrilled because um unlike many people you might hear around the country i have probably been with sleep number beds longer than almost anybody. I've had my sleep number bed for years and years and years. Mm-hmm. I just got updated. I love my sleep number bed. The idea of the dual air technology saved my back. And when I talk about dual air technology, we have a king size bed in the O'Mara household. We have a uh, bed yeah, that do. Carla has her side, I have my side, and we adjust it to our specific settings. I like a great 
firm mattress. Carla doesn't like hers as firm as mine. And I will tell you something. It aligns your spine. It is fantastic. And it saved my back. That is the truth. Are you still in the upper 90s? Uh, I am in uh, 95. Wow. So I'm really, at 95 right now. But your back feels great. It's fantastic. Uh, we love it. It's called dual air technology. Let me tell you what that is. It allows you to adjust the support your body needs for your sleep number bed. Each side is adjustable. It makes the perfect bed for couples. Contouring to your neck, your shoulders, your back, and your hips for more proper spinal alignment. I'm not kidding you. I really think, especially, it's always uh, February, March that I that I that my back I tweak it somehow. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what it is, but I'm not walking upright without my sleep number bed right now. That's right. exactly how I feel about it. Hurry into the final days of the ultimate sleep number event. It's the largest closeout event of the year with savings of 50 percent on Innovation Series limited edition beds exclusively at a sleep number store. There are 425 sleep number stores nationwide. You can find one near you by calling 800 800- five. Five one one zero zero six one. That's eight hundred five one one zero six one zero zero six one. And you will also receive a fifty dollars savings card when you call. But mostly, don't forget to tell them that Mike O'Mara sent yes. you. Yes, and I mean it. I was so so excited when the people at Sleep Number decided to advertise mm-hmm. on this show because everything I'm telling you is the truth. I sleep on it every single night, and I even got the. Uh, the adjustable one that uh, rises up mm. so I can watch the TV. Yeah, just like Cesar Romero. Cesar Romero. <laughs> no, that's another product. You, God, does he? He can't do it. <laughs> You're not capable. You'll never have it. You will never have. The one thing that's magical about this show, when it comes to advertising, yes. Rob yes. is as dumb as dumb can be. <laughs> he will reference Mike, somebody I was that referencing, sold another bed. No, I was, was referencing when bed. I visited Caesar in his home. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I, I was. This, this is the shtick above all. Oh, God. I swear to God. That's every day. He'll never change. Change. No, too stupid. Never change, but right? he too loves stupid. so hard. <laughs> yes, he does love hard. Yeah, I'd love harder if I wasn't so stupid. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How many times over the years when I am uh, trying to service our fine sponsors mm-hmm. on this show? How many grenades do you think you've thrown? Well, it's the uh, thousandth show, so let's say <laughs> one thousand grenades. Yes, uh, I'll make a joke about another product. It's a daisy cutter. <laughs> For example, we'll be talking about Amazon. And uh, we'll be going, it's the charm of the show, it really is. We'll be talking about Amazon, one of our, you know, longtime advertising partners. And really, if you think about Amazon, you think about who do they compete against. Well, probably the only people they would compete against would be like a big box store. Right. And we will be doing an Amazon commercial, and Rob will say, I went to Costco just the other day. But and that, as much as it kills me, is the beauty of the program. I know. Because. It kills me. It's entertainment above all for Rob. And on the outside looking in, if he didn't do that, I would think that he's lying. He's right. just genuine. And he's a good liar. Yeah. No, I Make don't no know mistake. About that. Oh, yes, he really? is. Yeah, he'll admit it. He's, oh. a, he's a good liar. I have I my hate, moments. I, hate, <laughs> I have my moments. I hate that you're a good and liar. And really understand now this. I when, I, when I referenced Romero, it was mostly just a dig at Mike's age. Mm. Thank you very much. Uh, I understand that. And I don't think that bet is even made anymore but anyway uh so <laughs> well yeah, i've never heard and besides mr romero long gone yeah well he, yeah <laughs> cesar romero <laughs> hello batman <laughs> yesterday you don't even know that character no do you? i don't cesar romero was the original joker batman from the oh. batman television show really yeah and he was great he wouldn't shave his mustache for the role so they just put makeup over it <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> Let me roll on into the uh, TMOS top 10 favorite moments. For me, uh, I put this at number 10. Anytime something really good or really bad happens with Rob or Oscar. Why? How do you mean? I'm I'm, I'm painting with a huge broad stroke here. It is a blanket, but I'll tell you what it is. When you Just guys, us. I hope you know this. You what? would think that the uh, the ego that can be photographed from the air mm-hmm. that I'm accused of all the time. When you guys would come in on any given day. And give me something that's fabulous. Okay. You know, where something, th- this happened to me. In Oscar's case, I, uh, recently we had his mom on the show. And Oscar talks yes. about his mom all the time. And I love those moments. I love your relationship stories. I love your stories with Shannon, uh, you know, where you're out and you're doing. I love the fact that you're staying over at Todd Moore's house and you have that very questionable relationship with him. Right. All of those Sleepovers. things. When you have specifics, though, you would bring to me, right. it would be very, very special. On the other hand, Rob Spiewak, when he would come to me and Rob would talk about something special happening with his kids, I have been with Rob through his children growing up. Oh, God, you're Mike. We've been together before I was married. Do you still um, have the Julia Hello? Uh, of course That's right I there, do. Right? Hello. Oh, yeah. Hello. 
to see her now. It's yes. so wild. And, yeah. and, and so I like that. As far as something really, really bad happening, what's, uh, what's frustrating about Rob is it rarely happens. <laughs> well, it rarely luck. happens with Rob. What, the, what happens is this. So all the time. All the time. He never shares his darkness. Very rarely do you share the, the oh, dark. You, get you it. share the hatred of the listener, which uh, you know, which is uh, somewhere deep inside of you. No, but... I got a very uh, a very lovely uh, message the other day about how could I possibly laugh when my wife sat in the parking lot of her job crying. <laughs> so I share darkness. Yes. I just I don't have much to share. Yes, I know. Well, you keep it because what you keep done, it Mike, bottled up inside. That's why your butt it, hurts. He spins all the time. it into an old fashioned. Well, you have that's made, what he does. You yes. have made me. Able to live this life, Mike. So for that, I thank you. <laughs> a life mean? of leisure. What, what does that mean? I mean, what you does have, that mean? You have allowed me to create a job for myself mm -hmm. where, I mean, do you know what really, if I were to write my resume now, what my occupation would be? Yes. My occupation is Rob. Right. Yeah. And that's that's what I do. This I mean, sure, I, I write some copy, I cut some audio, I show up, I talk, but I'm mostly, I'm just, I'm Rob. And, it and borders, that's great. I think both Oscar and I, when we look at you, uh, you know, we move along to, uh, you know, the, the, the stories of Rob. And uh, Oscar and I, it's, it's kind of envy, but it's also jealousy. There's a, there's a weird wow. dynamic, but it just pisses me off. I, I, I carry, if there's something that goes wrong within the infrastructure of this business. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and Rob has been at, like an A+. Plus, uh, like If you want him in your foxhole, he's the, he's the right guy to say, oh, all right, get on it. Yes. And he, nothing you would ask of Rob that he won't be able to When we took over well, heavy lifting. the <laughs> business side of the incarnation. Can you do that too, pal? I know, but just kidding. You see. And you're looking for someone to help you with the workload he's the right guy he is the the wrong guy uh is he's the wrong guy for when you call and something has gone wrong mm -hmm. and you want to vent to him and you want that him never gonna work with Rob. to talk about how wrong it is right you know he's and not, it's gonna, not be gonna create the right out of it right but for some reason as you get into maybe your second <laughs> sentence of what is wrong mm -hmm. he drops into what i look uh i, I affectionately call is <clears throat> There's always tomorrow, Rob. <laughs> so, because I wrote these down. True. There's always tomorrow, Rob, is a guy that realizes there's a meteor heading smack dab to Washington, D.C. Right. True. We're all going to die. Yeah, he's gonna, gonna, he, there's no chance he can survive this. Extinction for the species. I would call him. And I, it's, it's a life-altering event, world-altering right. event, planet-altering event. Right. I would call him and, and break this down to him and say, look, we got to take cover. We got to run. Carrie's making mini pizzas. Hold on, I'll call you back in ten minutes. Or he'd say, "Hold on a second, we're out of butter. Let me call you right back." <laughs> it doesn't matter to Rob. No, it doesn't. Because if even if there isn't a tomorrow, mm -hmm. he's got to live for today. This is true. I don't know. Maybe it has to do with uh, what I've been through. Yeah, and I don't. I don't want to get too deep here because this is just to be a light cursory roundtable. But I've been through a lot in that. Unless it is really something life altering, yes, you do get through it. Do you, you have to? Do you? And I'm not going to waste time worrying about stuff that, in the big grand picture, we are going to get through. It. Do and you, you know, know we are going? Do to. you know seriously how healthy that is? Do you know that? Oh, I, I mean, can't do that. As somebody who has spoken to people about that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, years and years of analysis, you're talking about in the moment. You're you talking about being yeah. present. You have to and be. I, I think there are a multitude of psychoanalysts out there that will tell you that living in the moment, that freeing yourself of that is extremely, not only difficult to do for most people, but the right thing to do. I've never had this discussion with you. When, when Oscar was describing that, Oscar and I are, are brooders where it's like, what happened last week? I got, but more, Oscar thinks forward more than backwards. Right. I think kind of backwards. Uh, you know, I'll think something that happened. I don't want that to happen again. Oscar will be staying up all night long thinking about, I got to do this Thursday. I got to do this Friday. You kind of do in the moment. And I swear to God, most people will tell you that is the way to. Oh, well, yeah. you know what? Yourself. I used to be that way. Right. I really did. And I think that's why I have just a, a trace of my stomach left. Mm -hmm. But I've been through a lot. Right. And, um, yeah, I mean, any, anybody. Anybody it, that it, wants it to know, me on yeah, it, anybody no. wants to bust Rob's balls, I'm going to stick up for you here. You know, oh, you know after I was pissed off at you about the initial commercial, but I will tell you this: when if I can't even fathom it, having uh, being the father now of three, I can't even fathom being able to survive psychologically going through having a, a child mm. with cancer. I don't know how. And Rob, you what? did it, uh, you know, while he was working in a very difficult work environment with all of us. And you know, I think that's part of that. You, Mike, you, you learn would, how to do it. You would have done it. And you, you know you, why? You because you're it. never given more you can handle. Right. Exactly. And you'd be able to do it. But 
it ain't easy. Yeah. And that is, you know what? That's that's why there's uh, there's mm-hmm. always tomorrow, Rob. But I love the, I love it. There's always tomorrow, Rob. Because when I'm done with that conversation, mm-hmm. I have to call either my girlfriend <laughs> right. or Todd Moore uh-huh. and explain to him why Rob doesn't care about anything. <laughs> <laughs> He does it, and even during the best. He's happier. Night, and, but your story longer. is your story is flawed because in your story, I actually picked up my phone. He, he does care Very about. True. He does care about tomorrow if there's a trip to King's Dominion or, or Peking Gourmet. God forbid something happens to his jukebox. Yes, yeah. Those you the know, moment if the a mo- tube goes out, right? It, it happens. It, that's it, what he gives an answer. These are these are the priorities. If a these light bulb priorities. goes out, right? Yes, it's he's done. It's frustrating. It and, is. Uh, but that's the way he uh, he operates, and that's the way it goes. We are a souffle. Let, let me. <laughs> all uh, of us. Uh, we all play a key role. Okay. If Julia. you don't mind, I would love to, child to pivot to Mike. Yeah. Um. I've now, got, are you at number ten? Now, how are you doing? How are you organizing your thoughts? I've got ten. Okay. Do you want me to go through all of them? No. No. Oh, okay. We're going round table. Okay. We're going one each at a time here. That's the way I want to do it. Confection, Mike. And confection I, Mike. Yes. Did we see Confection Mike yesterday? Yes. Yeah, but, I think we but, did. Oh, God, I'm going to get busted out I now. never knew I know what about talk Confection about. Mike. I really didn't know what a confection was mm-hmm. until um, Mike explained it to me here on the program. This might be the subheading of why I'm fat. No, no I didn't think about that at okay, all. Okay, very good. Uh, I just figured that, you know, <clears throat> when um, <laughs> Sherry's Berries arrives, <laughs> and you I, claim I, Not that, just berries. Uh, cupcakes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cheesecakes. Right. Uh, the wonderful berries, the size of your fist. Yes. yes. Uh, when they arrive, Mike <laughs> makes a proclamation. This actually happens not just with Sherry's berries. Anything that's delicious. <laughs> yeah. That that comes our way. Anything. Anything says, that's delicious. Take it. Do anything for food. <laughs> take it with you guys. Right. I, I don't need it. Take it. Take it. And I'm like, wow. Like, and then when Mike first did this, I was like, this is. This man is just an ox. He's just does it right. Really. He will not bend. His will is so strong. Generous. <laughs> Generous. Yes. Get to the goddamn point. Not five minutes later. Yes. He's elbow deep in cupcakes. <laughs> no, no, no. They were cupcakes. They were cookies. Oh, sorry. They were cookies. Sorry. And I believe the quote, if I recall, I'm not much on detail, but mm-hmm. I think the quote was, these stay here. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you well wait a minute i didn't i didn't eat the whole box w- once those five minutes pass <laughs> right whether it be uh the bark you love yes. from costco uh-huh. or the cookies that come in the mail right you stare at them after you're done it's almost like you're like, hunting your prey you stare at them like a serial killer <laughs> and then you might cross the bear thank you is. that was I- a- I'm sorry, Mike. We love track of time here. Yeah, no, Mike. That was a that was a nice highlight. All right, we're <laughs> going to take a break. We'll come back with more on the Mike O'Mara show. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Whoa, whoa! Are you part of the procrastination? Wow. Well, never fear, folks. It's not too late to jump on the 2014 bonus show bandwagon. Get your bonus shows now. You get all of the 2014 shows plus on-demand video access to each show. Hi, video access. Hi. Hey. Hello. And unlimited hey. access to the entire anthology. That's all the shows we've ever done. That's every TMOS bonus show since we started at the very beginning. And we've done 1,000 regular shows. How many uh, bonus shows have we done? 170-something, Pony? Yeah, it'll be 170 tomorrow. 170 hours of content. Wow. I mean, you'll... I mean, can people really listen to that all in a year? I don't know. Uh, at sixty nine ninety nine, you save over twenty five percent. We also have monthly packages and a la carte. Check out all the details at MikeOmeraShow dot com and choose the one that's right for you. Just click on the bonus show banner. Remember, order now and you won't miss a single second of the bonus fun. The two thousand fourteen bonus packages because five hours a week just ain't enough. And this week, it's all of your listener questions. Send it to uh, questions at MikeOmeraShow dot com. Very cool. We'll answer them on the, this week's show. All right. So uh, we got. To Oscar, we uh, do we have have you had yours? I've not yet? had one yet. Uh, it's time for you. Oscar went out of turn. Okay, so well, I, I think it's talk fun. about how much he watches me eat. Oscar is actually the topic of number ten it's for like me. Sport. A <laughs> highlight for me is, and it's sort of a small thing, except if you start to break it down, is when Oscar took a pleasure trip to China oh. and was able to call us from China, mm-hmm. and that is something that you know we we used to do a lot of crazy phoner stuff, right? And we don't do a lot of phone stuff anymore. But the fact is, is he broke several international laws and podcasted with us from China. And that will always be a highlight to me because I know it was not an easy call to make, A, because of the technology, and B, because you were hungover. Ni hao, Rob. Uh, I'll say this. <laughs> Ni hao. That Great accent. A buzzkill. Again, because this is a family and you don't want to let your family down. Right. When you guys say, call in. Uh, we yeah. want you to call in. No problem. Take care of it. When you're recording the show, though, it's nighttime over in uh, Hong Kong exactly. or, or Beijing. Mm-hmm. Right. So 
And when you're in a town that you really don't know very well, mm -hmm. it's always trying to plan out how am I going to get back to the hotel right. to do the show, sure. mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, it, 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 and, I, and Todd, if he's listening, uh, I don't even know if he listens anymore, but he's still a friend. What do you mean he doesn't listen well, anymore? Because he's, he's building his his empire. And he's also been hurt so many times. No, no, they listen to the show. <laughs> he's but, been wounded no, so he's many fine. times. He's got an he's, office now with employees. Hi, Officer Meg. He's down in the Todd cave. <laughs> he's got an office now with employees. So right now, if Todd heard that, and Todd's going... <laughs> he's just shaking his head. Right. Shaking they used to blast the show in his house when they were at his house, but now that he's in the office, he just he listens with headphones yeah, on. Mostly like Christmas music. So... um. When I remember looking at Todd, the three nights I did it, I said, I got to go. He said, what do you mean you got to go? I got to do the show because my alarm would go off on my phone. And it would, I would give myself two hours to get back to the hotel. Right. Without fail, <laughs> I would get there two minutes before I had to call. And it was great, though. The quality was amazing. The when fact you that in. you guys and Tony was here and you guys like the quality of the calls, that's something I'd never done before. And I wanted to make sure I did it because... You know, again, we're a family. You want to deliver. It yeah, and great. the thing is, uh, the, the China trip, as I remember, came up rather quickly. I oh, mean, yeah. It was like you were like bing, bang, boom. Like a bad like, STD. But, you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you or knew, a good one. You uh, knew that you wanted to do it because you kind of felt like you were leaving us in the lurch. Yes. And you, you wanted to do that. And then it ended up being bigger than we ever expected where, you know, we go to Oscar in China. Those reports were a lot of so fun. So much. Loved we, it. We Loved try it. to do that. We try to do that when we hit the road. Uh, you know, moving on to my thing, uh, one, of, one of the special moments, speaking about the road i had gone uh was it three years ago i think three years ago i had uh, taken a trip down to haiti and it was uh oh, yeah. just an amazing experience for me with uh the helping haitian angels organization and we sat down uh last year with uh, my friend bill harvey who uh, was the founder of this organization building an orphanage for the uh, children of haiti and um one of the things i was uh, realizing right away was they need money and i don't got a lot of it myself right and so the fact is that uh, we decided to uh, get the show involved, and get the listeners involved. And the response that we got uh, when we did the Helping Haitian Angels House, Build a House for Haiti, we not only got the number that we were looking for, but we just cruised past that. And the reason that happened is that uh, the co-founder of the organization, a lady named Debbie Harvey, mm -hmm. you, uh, oh, if, you've listened, if you've listened for a long time, you know Debbie Harvey has been on the show, and she's really a terrific uh, spokesman for the Much organization. Much better than her husband. Oh, my God, yeah. 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 He, meh. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> Hi, Bill. So she came in here. And I found out early on in the process that every time one of our listeners would uh, make a donation to Helping Haitian Angels, Debbie Harvey would write a handwritten note to yeah. them, and that is what I call labor intensive. And it's certainly not something People you're don't do you that know, in this. It's certainly in the land of the internet with right. uh, the money raising that goes on there. Uh, it's so easy to ask for money, and it's so easy to process money that people forget that the old-fashioned, uh, you know, handwritten note saying thank you was incredible. Right. And she came in when I heard about that. I said, you know what? If she can do that, <laughs> oh boy, I remember this moment. If she can do that, I can certainly get on the phone and call each and every person uh, that is making a donation. And when I said that, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> The tops of your heads collectively came off. I really looked and around. Everybody donated. I looked around like you were going to have a punchline, right? Because right. that yeah. really <laughs> was the most. That's when I realized your trip to Haiti changed you. There was yes. no phone bank. Be there wasn't anything that no you had to bank. do it all on your own. Yeah. That was yeah. <laughs> Maybe if you had had like a personal dialer. Yes. But here's the thing. <laughs> The like thing about cold it, calls. and you know, <laughs> when you thought of it at at first, I, I a when I said it, I kind of said it without realizing that it was going to take a, a chunk of time. Sure. Then when I realized it was going to take a chunk chunk of time, uh, Lazy Mike came in and just went, "Oh God, yeah, you got to do it." And then when I started doing it, it all changed back again, yeah, right? Because it was so much fun talking to people for like a split second and moving on to the next person and I loved it and we ended up raising a ton of money we built a for, house for helping and you worked built together with your lovely wife yes and she was she dialing and you were just going from phone no, to phone no I did the dialing oh, okay. uh, you know I did the dialing it she wrote a, the script it would be the little <laughs> call <laughs> block you know yeah, yeah. Gotcha. And, and occasionally I'd mess up the call block yeah. you know the phone rings like hey Mike I, said, Don't. I guess I guess, and I love the calls <laughs> it's like 
I love the people that say, I guess you didn't block your phone. It's like, okay, a-hole, thank you very much. Thanks for your donation. Hey, that but, reminded me of a moment I don't have on my list. What's that? Is when we did, I forgot to block the number to Tom Gavin. Oh, my God. <laughs> the initial phone not on my, call. Not on my top list. <laughs> I know. Sorry about that, buddy. Uh, go ahead, Rob. Um, this one actually has an audio tape along with it. This is the only clip I pulled because you need to hear it to understand what it really felt like. When we had a different configuration in the studio during one show, a computer fell. And it hit a boom mic that was uh, sort of like a, uh, you know, a teetering boom mic. And it used the weight of the computer to shove my microphone into my face <laughs> in the middle of the show. Let's, let's go to the tape. <laughs> so many great people have been Well, you know, would you song. like to hear? Oh, my, oh my God. God. Holy oh, Jesus. Christ. Did you get hit? Just a little bit. Did you get hit in the mouth? Yeah. It was a little disconcerting. Play it again. Play it again. <laughs> I have to hear that for the VA. Because I asked him to play it like 20 times after that. Okay. So, yeah, it's a, it, it really did hurt. I want you to know that. So many great people have been Well, you know, would you song. like to hear? Oh, my, oh my God. Holy Jesus. Jesus. Christ. Did you get hit? Just a little bit. Did you get hit in the mouth? Yeah. It was, it was a little disconcerting. <laughs> the what main the f***? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I healed. But I think after a thousand episodes, that's our only workplace injury. <laughs> But that I love, you know, the, the, the live things. And you know what? We do tape the show, Too but we fun. handle the show like a live show. And those are the moments that I will always remember. <laughs> That's, you know what? I don't think enough um, people really understand that, that. What's that? This show is run like a radio show, like oh, yeah. a real radio show. We hit record, and that's how we do the show. Exactly. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it'll always be a radio I show. I love it. Yeah, and I, I like it because it's a safety net for me. It's a comfort zone for me, and make no mistake about it. The formatics and all the stuff we do, that's uh, my little radio cocoon that I don't mm -hmm. think I'll be able to blast out of. Uh, Oscar, go ahead. Uh, this, one next, uh, this next one is titled Sexy Rob. <laughs> With two Bs. Oh, no. Uh, we found out, I think in the early, might have been the first year of the this this incarnation, that Rob is not, he doesn't just love uh, oh, as no. far as his uh, family and his kids and right. uh, after school events and right. all that BS that he does because he loves so hard. Right. Doing he, it tonight, doing another he, talent show uh, Thursday Tomorrow night. night. Yeah, right, tomorrow must night. be nice. Sorry, I, got it. Uh, I would great. say this. Sorry. That... Sorry, sorry, I got it wrong. Sorry. God forbid. <laughs> Tomorrow night, make sure it's at 8 o'clock. Well, be tonight there. i got to work on the material. With a tuxedo. What you realize is that he loves his wife. Yes, he yeah, I do. He genuinely loves her. I so do. So much so. So do I. That he partakes in um, devious, deviant sexual acts. Well, there's nothing devious about it, but a deviant, yes, of course. This is, this is so I don't My know, stomach's starting to grow. I don't know what bit. trip he was on or where right. she went or what it was, but for some reason decided to blurt out that he had some intimate time with his wife on Skype. Mm -hmm. That's right, the phone sex. Yes. yes. It was, uh, it was no, iPad. Skype sex. iPad Skype sex. sex, yeah. Really? Mm. Uh, okay, you don't need to do that. <laughs> you don't need to do that. And we got into it, and if you're uh, really, uh, if you're the, the listener that keeps track and you know really has a library of these things you'll see that within that conversation mike and i kind of start clamping up because <laughs> rob was so excited to share right, i know he was he was the wrong guy to share that yeah. he liked no, he, if you if you a great moment if, on the program if you Thank get you. to that inner cookie of rob he shares a little bit too much and it really starts to well, freak me out what like, i love the most whether it's a medical problem when we've or been into it sexual. i mean we we're talking about you know above all entertainment and my entertainment is watching right. you flip out yeah hi mike look at me <laughs> no, remember he, he i don't want to figure out how to get the ipad to sit up a certain way because he was on the bed <laughs> i so, forgot yeah. about that remember that, that but he remembers so that that he had to like he had to, so he had to a great he, pull for that he had to, he had to like wedge the ipad somewhere so it would stand stand up so you could see the camera i will tell right. you this though when you are having that sort of relationship via skype it's very nice you ever have a phone conversation with someone you don't know when it's over right with this you know when it's over. Ah! <laughs> okay that's funny we'll leave it at that okay uh, my next one, I'm going to roll uh, eight and seven in together because okay. they're both uh, road trips. The road trips are uh, highlighted on my list quite a bit here. Yeah, mine uh, too. Circus Circus in Reno, Nevada was uh, one of the best weekends. Have it on my list. It, mine too. It, it was. Uh, we all have it on our list because it was uh, not only the uh, – we, we'd sold out our very first live show, and that was a big, big thrill. But to realize that we could do it on the West Coast as well – and that your passion for the show was so tremendous on the West Coast was so, so exciting for us. And, you know, you combine the fact that it is a casino town, that it's, uh, you know, you're on a marquee, you go into this town, and then we had a fantastic show. That was just, uh, every part of that was special. When, when I remember when we were planning out the first trip to Reno and we said, well, 
I think our break-even number was uh, 350 tickets. And we said, if we can sell 350 tickets, we'll do it. And when we did that on the first day, it felt great. But later on in the week, when we hit the magic number of 800 and it yeah. was a sellout, yep. I felt 10 miles we high. Were, we were thrilled with that. It was that. so cool. Everything that goes along with it. I mean, the travel, uh, you know, and I will tell you that I think going forward, as we kind of uh, go in separate directions here, and we're going to be, you know, our get-togethers, our road trips are going to be even more special. A little we're, epic, yeah. You know, we're going to see each other for the, you know, for, uh, you know, the first time in a while, and I think that's going to be great. We're going to just try to be creative with them, and uh, I include also the uh, the road trip to Iowa. Uh, oh, yeah. Which was really, uh, you know, the, the it was so much fun to to have everybody on the bus, and uh, you know, we had a great great time going out there. Uh, you know, the ups and the downs of throwing all of us onto a Soap bus opera. together, yeah. mm-hmm. it was nuts, and it, it was fantastic. Remember the seven hour appearance? Oh my god! Yes. Oh, the, the, that was truly. That was actually that was when we flew out. Oh, okay. that's that, when we flew out. That one was not on my list. That's right. Not because as, that different. was the day Rob said, by the way, at last minute. No, Robin, Robin, no, no, no. How did it go down? You signed off on it when I explained it to you. And then when we got there and we did it, that's when you didn't like it. Well, wait a minute. Did you tell me we were going to? I gave how you many the places schedule. did we go to? Three places. And the last one. Two I, hours at each place. Uh, I think it was hour, hour, three hours or something. I don't know. But I do know you signed off on it. Right. That doesn't change the fact that you hated it, but you did agree to it in advance. It you might being, not have focused. Did on I it. really agree to it in advance? I promise. It ended up being a great day. It, it was, was good, fun. but it was, it was hot. But the road hot. trip to Iowa and the moment of the road trip that was the most special is that we had the giant RV, and as we got off the exit at KCJJ, my number six, those guys could actually see us. <laughs> And they were broadcasting about the bus pulling into the parking lot oh, that's right. of KCJJ, and you know Rob was out of his mind oh. because he, he he Rob for some reason uh, fancies himself as that is his radio station. Oh yeah, that is his place. It that will is be. A, and that is <laughs> it will be if we have a good year. <laughs> Why, we, we have a good year here. You're going to buy the I'm place. Buy the place, Mike. You're gonna buy and, it. No, you're not. And we're going <laughs> to no to ensure the <laughs> fact that we stay on it. <laughs> what is it that? was so What's much. What's a fun? good year? You want to get afford ten grand? Yeah. I'm selling it for you, jerk. Okay. We just spit in. If we have a great year. Spit in KCJJ's. If we have to have a great, I have to have a great year. So a we can good all year. <laughs> having them broadcast. Buy an effing radio station. We'll and never have a year just, like that. Just one. <laughs> going to the football game, uh, they're sure. going out on a Friday night in <laughs> Iowa City. And I remember noticing it, that we, you know, we're looking at these co-eds, and I'm like, my God, they dress like that yeah. now? Mm-hmm. You know, these wholesome Midwestern kids that are all doing that? It was a, uh, a terrific trip. So, uh, Very cool. The road trips will rear their ugly he- uh, head one more time. But uh, go ahead, Rob. When you mentioned the trip to Reno, I think one of my, and this is a personal moment. I've shared moments with you guys. But as far as for me personally, to come out and warm up a crowd, not just at the State Theater, but in a casino hotel, and for you guys to put that trust in me to be the ringleader and to come out, warm the crowd you up, love it. bring out the comics. That's the theater arts in you right there. And it's, it is quite... Simply a dream for me, and I would never, I would never it. be able to think that it would have happened. I mean, it's something that I would think that, oh my God, wouldn't that be great? By the way, let's get an update here because the fact is, people are constantly ask, asking me about the uh, West Coast uh, live show. Yes, and, uh, Oscar's kind of uh, running. Yeah, point, we're working on it. Point uh, on that. Uh, can't give you full details yet. Really, we've, be a, we've reached out already. There's some stuff going on before that that yeah, we got to right. deal with, and uh, you'll hear it. But trust that we will we are, be out there. We are going to be out there on the West Coast this fall. We will be there. We haven't nailed any anything down uh, firmly just yet, but we will be out there. And, uh, you know, listen, uh, you should know that I think it was uh, summertime uh, when we did the fall appearance in Reno, where we let you know where we were going to be. That's right. So you got a you got Fast a little turnaround. bit of a wait, but don't worry, uh, West Coasters, it's coming to you. We'll we're not there. sure where it's going to be, but it's coming to you. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it was just. Fantastic. But anyway, there was just. I mean, again, and it has so much to do with the listeners because it was a warm, wonderful room. Oh, but really it was loved. if I could press if I could press play and record and save a moment, that would be one I would do. Uh, let's just blast through all our lists. Uh, okay. You know, uh, Oscar, if you want to go ahead and just uh, knock them all because we're we're running out of time. Sure. Um, uh, when I captured a shot in the wild with Rob's limp wrist, 
<laughs> Rob holds his wrist. Right. Uh, and I don't know if it's muscle at- at- atrophy. But I don't <laughs> That's know. what it is. I know exactly what's happening, but I saw his big mitt just hanging there. <laughs> like it didn't have any bone attached to it. So when you took a picture yeah, of it? Yeah, and I said, look at this guy. Dead and, in I the water. Said, and I sent it to you. <laughs> you sent it to me. <laughs> During the show. Yes. You also took a picture of his stomach. And his jeans, oh, uh, you know, on, on some I'm of the so road cruel. trips, you are what cruel to him. No, what, what, it, was, to it wasn't brother. so much my stomach. It yeah. was my mom jeans. Oh, your mom jeans, jeans were all the way. Oh, mom yeah. jeans were doing that. I've gotten, stomach. I've gotten better. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you're much better. <laughs> Thank right? you. Not that much better. Uh, you <laughs> but got if some, we're you got uh, Butter with the side of shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> that is recent. Oh, that when goes. you made dinner for the Culver's. so bad. Such a disaster. Facebook Julia. Oh, yeah. Julia Jellybean. Where he referred to was uh, John Dillinger? Yeah, Julia that... Dillinger. Mm. Yes. yes, Julia Dillinger, because she uh, she done some sneakiness. Still not allowed to be on Facebook. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. remember wow. she is. See, he is a he. He does put the yeah. hammer down. Hey, you know what? That's you a mean, long punishment. She was grounded. I'm not talking about just being re- removed from the internet. She was literally grounded for a summer for that. Really? Two and a half month grounding. Hey, see, yeah. you think of Mister Happy yeah, Happy that, Joy Joy, but I that's like him. I remember that Christmas he got her. A- Spanish Inquisition, Rob. He got her a laptop. Said basically, go on when I'm not watching. <laughs> that is Tobacco true. Pony. Tobacco oh, Pony. Yeah, yeah where, yes. where I really realized that Pony had a problem was in Vegas at CES. Yes. Great time mm-hmm. where he would just load luggage with one hand right. and he would smoke with the other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then my last one is Squirrel Mike. Where <laughs> oh, yeah. it never happened either. It, it no, never really no. Happened. But when I drive by cars that aren't police cars, and right. they're known as quote unquote squirrels. Squirrels. Uh, thank I'm you, like, Officer Meg, for that one. Thank God, Mike is not that guy. Oh, by the way, uh, Officer Meg, if you're listening, I, I know you sent me a, a message about uh, one more ride along before mm-hmm. I get out of Dodge, and uh, I'm going to try to make that happen. Cool. Well, you so have the shoes. I'm yeah. looking forward to the shoes. <laughs> Do you want to do a quick break here and come back, and we'll finish our list? Yeah, we'll wrap it up okay. uh, with our list. We'll take a break. Come back with more on the Mike O'Mara show right after this. Ever. Funny. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. This portion of our show is brought to you by our friends at Encore. It's a new year, and if you're out there shopping insurance, it's hard to know which company offers the best value. Encore, they've been with us for such a long time. They survey the most highly rated companies in the insurance industry. They compare the rates. They can help you, you, you. Here's yes. the number I want you to call. If you are celebrating TMOS 1000 today, how about celebrating Encore today? Because they've been one of Love our it. finest sponsors. 866 347 5748 to get a free life insurance quote. It's all free. There is no obligation. No salesman will call on you. If you uh, prefer computers, go to smartterm.com. That's where you'll find the license disclaimer and quality customer service. Encore Insurance Services, LLC. Stop paying too much for life insurance. Protect your family the smart way at smartterm.com. And Encore has been responsible for so many of our road trips yeah. and getting us on the road. Maybe all of them. Underwriting yeah. that. They've done a terrific job, and we appreciate that. I got news you may not need coming up here. I want to blast through uh, all of ours. I'll uh, I'll lay those out for you right now. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I, in this order, I go to uh, number seven. Uh, was our road trip to Iowa? I had that. Uh, number six, announcing that Carla was pregnant. That, that was, was terrific crazy. for me. Chicago, right? You uh, talked over Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. Uh, does anybody know what time it yep. is? Yep. Mm-hmm. And uh, number five, the very first time we took phone calls from all over the world. <laughs> I love telling this story because we were so excited. We got calls from Japan. We got calls from Northern Ireland. We yep. got calls, I think, from Botswana. So excited, and I said, "We're coming in tomorrow. We're going to do more, more of your phone calls." And then we came in the next day, and we got calls from Botswana yeah. and Japan, same and the people. same people called. It was That's ridiculous. Right. Uh, number four, walking through the CES. Believe it or not, that last day that was so great. With our that was de- magic. Uh, recording that segment Fun. with you guys when we were walking through that was incredible. Number three, all of our Christmas parties. It's a highlight of the year. Oh, so true. There's so much fun, and you never know what's going to happen. And right. it's, I'll tell you, I am so exhausted by the end of that show. Mm-hmm. I am literally, I, I can't keep my head up because I am, I am the kitten wrangler that day more than I ever am, and uh, it's still a blast. It is. Number two uh, was our first live show at the State Theater, which I will never forget. I will never forget Rob and I sitting up in the green room and hearing people doing shtick from the show out the window. And we could hear that. It was fantastic. So cool. And we loved doing our live shows. And the number one for me was our road trip to Maine. Not yeah, only oh, because oh, wow. the I shows were fun, but when I realized, and the two guys I'm working with now, uh, Rob and Oscar, 
you know, you loved Maine. Oh, it was amazing. And I, and I, and that just made me feel so special that, uh, you know, and we're definitely going to try to go back there. And you guys loved it. And, uh, it was just fantastic. Fantastic. So, cool. And, and I would be, look, you know, a lot of people say we had a, we had a larger crew. We have a smaller crew now, but it was great. All the road trips were great with Buzz and with RJ and with Mark Ronick. They were all fantastic. Uh, you know, the, the, the fact that, uh, we moved on and they moved on, it was tough. Anytime you have change like that, mm-hmm. it's a tough situation. It was a sucky time for us, but uh, they were part of the history, and I didn't want to do a whole show uh, with 1,000. They've been part of that 1,000 as well. Okay, uh, my, I'll finish up. Uh, I think the trip to Florida was key for me because it was the first time that the three of us shared a space for an extended period of time, just the three of us. True. And we were in the uh, SUV whole way down and the whole way back, and it was it was just so comfortable and so funny and mm-hmm. almost like a, a peek into the future. I didn't even know what was happening. Right. Uh, the trip down there, so true. I laughed literally till I hurt, and mm-hmm. that was a great moment for now me. Now, listen, I, I should mention that uh, you know we, we archive our shows, so I mean all this stuff. It's all there. It's out there. Yeah, you want to wade through it, you can find it. Now, this one is, I don't know why, this was one of the first things I wrote down is when you were working two jobs, you were working at Jennifer Street and coming back here to do this. Oh, God. I always will find it delightful that you're, when you would get sleepy, your solution was to buy an ice cream cone and eat it in an elementary school parking lot. I'm doing this in <laughs> Car yes, running. And yeah, but you see, it's not about food. It's about you, like, sitting creepily in an elementary <laughs> school parking yeah. lot. You well, didn't it was process just, that, like, hold recess on, was letting hold out. Hold on, hold your on. Your car was running. The elementary school. You're wearing a trench coat. <laughs> <laughs> the, there he is again. The elementary ice school. Cream. It was convenient. <laughs> And it's when I would, you know, I was so sleep deprived, I like know, insanely sleep deprived. Was that was the only convenient turnoff where I could find a place where I could just park and you're maybe America's probably not the, the best choice. Another moment that jumped to mind is when we were in uh, South Bend, Indiana, yep. at the home of Notre Dame. Yes. And uh, we were standing in the rain. Right. And we went to go into the RV that we were driving cross country. <gasps> And it was locked, and the door was broken, and we literally <laughs> had to push Oscar through a window that we had now. to break to open. I know. So breaking know. into the RV was key for me. Mm-hmm. I am so proud of the fact that we've shared the air with so many broadcasters that that we all admire, most notably Tony Perkins. Great and guy. When he sits in with us, it's always a treat, and I'm very pleased. A great moment for me was when he announced he would be coming on board our network. Very because cool. Because when you get to share a network with someone that is such a consummate pro, it makes everybody happy. Uh, also, just brief, walking into a uh, beach bar with Mike and seeing a senior citizen polka band, I shall never forget that. Oh, that was fantastic. Um, to be it personal for a second, to share the air with Oscar, which is something I oh, never man. thought would happen. You right. Have to say that. So great. Feel the same really way. just yeah. a I wonderful wish, broadcaster. I wish I could share that. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> when I first started in radio, I was listening to music radio, mm-hmm. and that's what got me interested. And to sit down and do a couple spectaculars with you, sir, oh, yes. is a dream come true. Yay! And I hope we get to do more of those in the future. Oh, we will. Absolutely. And my final moment of the 10 is that... Uh, not everyone in my family was enthusiastic, proud, or even approved of what I did when I chose my career. But the fact that my dad has become a part of this show's fabric and HCS, sat in with baby. us yeah. and fixed your fixed your septic tank. Yes. What a great guy. I love my dad, and I love Yay. he's a part of the show. So All those right. are my ten. I love great. that. There we go. And that's, <laughs> that's a little trip down memory lane. the nation, looking through your neighbor's window. The Mike O'Mara Show now presents news you may not need. A comprehensive look at the stories you may or may not be talking about during your daily activity. And now, news you may not need. All right, boys, uh, news you may not need now. Ukraine is on fire. I don't know if you noticed oh that. Oh, my God. And that poor, they sent that poor NBC reporter, Richard Engel, there. Yeah, he's got to be there while they're all uh, in Sochi trying on jackets. It really does. It looks like uh, Independence Day over what there. What is going so on? crazy. Ukrainian President Viktor Yakunovich Oy. or Yanukovych. Yana Kunovich. Yeah, I'm sure that's it. He accused pro-European opposition leaders on Wednesday of trying to seize power by force after at least 26 people died in the worst violence since former Soviet Republic gained independence. Jeez. European officials uh, of the European Union condemned what they called the unjustified use of excessive force by the Ukrainian authorities. Uh, that country is burning up right now. It's another hot spot. I was totally Horrifying. caught by surprise because I know they're doing the same thing down in Venezuela. Yeah. They have a lot of uh, protesters down there. Caracas, right? Protesters have been occupying central Kiev 
glove for almost three months since uh, Yanukovych spurned a far-reaching trade deal with the EU and accepted a $15 billion Russian bailout. So they want to be more Western. And once again, man, those nasty Russians, it's beware. Horrifying. It's horrifying to see. Police have yet to substantiate a 19-year-old woman's claim that she killed more than 20 people in four states. This has been all over the Internet. This is the Craigslist killer, right? It's the Craigslist killer. North Cumberland, uh, Northumberland, rather, County District Attorney Tony Rossini said in a statement Tuesday, quote, there has been no verification of any of the information that has been the subject of media coverage, hmm. mostly online. Wow. I mean, this lady's been all over it. She claims that uh, she's lured multiple men into uh, relationships and then uh, murdered them. Wow. Uh, very, very scary, uh, along with her husband, she says. But they don't have any proof, and we'll have to keep an eye on that, because if it's true... Uh, this could be a massive serial killer case. Uh, we're not sure. In addition to the murder, she also admitted in a blog of sitting in an elementary school parking lot and having oh, an ice cream shut cone. up! <laughs> Georgia officials have once again approved a specialty license plate featuring the Confederate battle flag. Nice work, boys. Infuriating civil rights advocates and renewing a debate among those who believe the symbol honors Confederate heritage and others who see it as racially charged. The Georgia Division of the Sons of Confederate Veterans. Oh, yeah. There you go. That's good. Uh, uh, they requested the new plate. Its uh, old one had a small Confederate battle flag. The new one features an additional larger image in the background that covers the entire plate. I wonder if the vanity tag mm. Boss Hog is taken yet. <laughs> you put it on your Cadillac with the steer horns up front. A, a group spokesman says, it means no offense, and people have a right to commemorate their heritage. Yeah. Buzzword. There it is. You hear that a lot. Heritage. Yeah. Heritage. Does Manassas have license plates? <laughs> The Today Show won ratings gold last week in its morning show competition against ABC's Good Morning America. NBC's first weekly win since the London Olympics in the summer of 2012. Today averaged 6.22 million viewers for the first full week of competition in Sochi with Good Morning America at a 6.01. And uh, that's according to the Nielsen Company. Con so. Congratulations to them. But if they don't get out of that town soon, I think Al Roker is going to kill a, a tourist. Yeah, very because nasty. Because he looks like he's going uh, out of his mind. Really? Speaking of the yeah. Olympics, Finland eliminated Russia from the Olympic men's hockey tournament with a 3-1 victory on Wednesday. Ha -ha. Shocker. <laughs> uh, that puts a stunning end to the Russians' enormous expectations at home. Hell of a finish. Timo Solani <laughs> scored an early goal and Tuka Rask made 37 saves as Finland crushed the Russians' dreams of winning hockey gold. What's wow. the story on that team? Uh, that team has got a lot of... Uh, you want my, my, my real unvarnished yeah. opinion? A lot of pampered Russian athletes. A really? Lot, a lot of Alex Ovechkin being one of them. Well, I know wow. that, but I wouldn't think that's... Wow. Okay. I don't want to blame Ovi for uh, the fact that, no. uh, you know, you had Alexander Semen and Alex Ovechkin together again. Mm -hmm. Gee. Uh, people in Washington, D.C. that follow hockey know what I'm talking of about, course, so yeah. we'll see what happens. <laughs> According to the early numbers, 11.3 million people tuned in for Jimmy Fallon's debut on The Tonight Show on Monday night. That is down slightly from the 14.6 million who watched Jay Leno's last episode earlier this month, but it beat out Conan O'Brien's debut back in 2009 when he attracted 9.2 million viewers. I think it's going to take a while to see where Jimmy Fallon fits into the whole thing. And now a little something-something, everybody. Last September, college professor Dan Samuelson of the University of Florida was busted for taking upskirt videos of his female students. You see, that's bad, Oscar. He used a pen with a hidden camera. What a dummy. And he gave a classic excuse. <laughs> What's that? He told the cops he wasn't a pervert. He was, quote, attempting to gather proof that his students were not wearing undergarments in class. What kind of proof? Why, wh what? And he said what? he was outraged at their inappropriateness. What? How do you catch God. a pen camera? You have to be, like, really perving it up, I oh, imagine. God. <laughs> and can you mean he plays the indignity card? Yeah. It's outrageous. This is a harum, harum, Dick. harum. Oh, was but he was technique? also busted with Bad videos technique. of his students' breasts. Oh. oh. He couldn't talk his way out of those. Anyway, he was arrested uh, for two counts of felony video voyeurism, and uh, now he's taken a plea. Don was a professor of veterinary medicine. Oh, that's nice. He pleaded no contest and got three years of probation and a $672 fine. I wonder if he's ever worked on a beaver. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you very much. What are you so, doing? You know. Look at you. I had to. I just, you know, that, that animal was just in my mind for I that whole can. story. I understand. Audio Vault with Rob Spiewak coming up next on our 1,000th episode of The Michael Bay Show. All right, and it's coming. Oh, we got to get right back to Wow.
We're flying through the end of this one. Yeah. Welcome back to the show, Well Well, brought to you by the Mike O'Mara Show's Amazon page. Best way to support the show. You know that. Go to MikeO'MaraShow.com slash Amazon today and every day. It's a great way to save money and support the show. Just click Amazon at MikeO'MaraShow.com. I did it this week. Yes. Got some moving boxes, believe it or not. Fantastic. And I did it on Amazon. So uh, it's at our page. What do they ship boxes in? Uh, cardboard. <laughs> okay. Ah! A box of the uh, box. <laughs> let's open up the uh, audio vault for today. This is Feb 18, 2014, our 1,000th episode, Rob Spiewak. If you've ever worn a flower pot on your head, Mike. Sad, we lost the lead guitarist of Devo too young. Really? Bob Casal. How old was he? 61. Heart disease. And I believe that's the... How old does that make me feel that Devo... Devo is 61 years old. Jeez. So young. And I believe it is the uh, second member of Devo that we've lost. So, you know, that's sad. Great song. Yeah. We are not men, Mike. We are Devo. It's not like a plastic allergy, is it? No. <laughs> I'm well, so know, sorry. Too soon. You know those hats were flower pots they bought at a I hardware store. That. That's exactly what it was. I know okay. the song. All right. I, I need to tell a story here. This we've been sitting on for a day or so. He's a pastor, Mike. His name was Jamie Coots. Jamie Coots, this has been all over the internet. I uh, did a little research to see this man working with his snakes. He's a cane. Tu- he's a Kentucky pastor, Mike. Yes, he he comes from Old Kentucky, and uh, he would. He handle- was. Yeah, that's true. Right. But don't don't bury the lead. Mike. Okay. Don't sorry. Spoil it. I'm sorry. He would handle snakes as part of his religious ceremony, and he'd been bitten before. You know how I know this is good when what? Rob has this. Because Rob is, uh, of, you know, above all, he will be on these things before uh, you see them on. Right this away. story is about a week old. Mm. This is good. Okay. You're going to love this tape because, sadly, he was bitten last weekend and he did not make it. Yeah. And this is sad, right? He, he refused treatment, correct? He refused treatment as he always did. Mm. Let us go back to uh, a show that was on, I believe it was called... Uh, was on National Geographic, and I, I can't find the name. Men's that ha- men that handle snakes. Men that handle snakes. I will have it for you in a moment. Okay. What happened is he was bitten a few years ago, and his finger actually died and fell off. And here he is describing what? that. This is the biggest rattlesnake we have left, the cane break. If someone gets bit in my church and they're not immediate family, I will call nine one one, have the paramedics come out, and let that person tell them. I don't want medical attention. That's his policy. Ronald Snake bit me here. It was the most pain I guess I've ever felt in my life during the time that it was rotten, and I knew something was going on. I just didn't know what for the first month. That much of the bone was exposed before it broke off. That's crazy. Not so much as a Advil. No. Not so much as a aspirin. No. Why keep it? My wife told me <laughs> when this broke off in the yard, she said, I want to keep this. I said, why? She said, I want to keep that. I said, why? She said, I'll always have a piece of you no matter where you go. That's right. So she kept the finger after it rotted and fell off good. Ma, wa. Ma. And I said, wa. Ma. <laughs> I don't understand. Why wouldn't you accept treatment? The name of the program is well, Snake you know Salvation. What? You Nat haven't Geo. accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Yes, That's I right. have. <laughs> I call him when I need him. I call him when I need him. Uh, Fallon did one bit last night that I enjoyed. Now, you know, I like musical stuff. He does a lot of musical things. I had not seen him do this on his previous show. He did an R. Kelly song. The song is called Ignition. But he did it as a barbershop quartet. No, I'm not trying to be rude. Hey, pretty girl, I'm feeling you. The way you do the things you do. Remind me of my last school. That's why I'm all up in your grill. Trying to get you to the hotel. You must be a football that's the way you got me playing the field. So let me give you that toot toot. And let me give you that toot <laughs> Running her hands through my fro. Bouncing on 24. And I think the shocking ah! thing is that it works pretty well. It does. He's singing All lead. Right. He's the weakest link in the vocal. But God, it's a good arrangement. So we'll continue to peek oh, in and see what we can funny. find. That's His funny. guest last night was Seinfeld, who actually did a pretty good uh, uh, stand-up piece. Seinfeld. Oh, he wasn't douchey Seinfeld? No, he was actually funny. Oh, I can't wait. Uh, I might that actually open funny. a show with him this week. I thought he was good. Okay. Um, Mike, remember when we were on the radio and we got our fish pedicures? Yeah, oh God. Rob and I uh, put our feet <laughs> I remember listening to the, the little minnows, and they, uh, you know, we thought it was kind of cool. Didn't realize that we could die. Yeah, well, we handled it better than this lady. This is a YouTube video that's floating around. I don't think we sounded exactly like this. <laughs> <laughs> so what's happening? And I should have set it up better. She's putting her uh, her foot in a bucket of water that has fish that attack you and eat only the dead skin. Put the other one. <laughs> 
It's the other one is. It's the other one is. There it is. It's the is Mike it, and Rob show. Is it sanitary? <laughs> no, no, it's supposed to be very That's bad. the problem. They realize it's that they were putting unsanitary. everybody into huge, yeah. huge health risks. Come on, put it in with a little hepatitis C fish. <laughs> and we close, of course. You know, big news this week that uh, Jimmy Fallon started his show, and I was curious, how would Mr. Letterman handle it? And he handled it with a nice little dig. I love Dave. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it happened again. The uh, first thing this morning, I get a call from my mom. She says... David, <laughs> yeah, uh, did something happen to Jay? <laughs> <laughs> That's your magic audio vault. Have a great Wednesday, everybody, and happy 1000 to my hey, boys here. For huh? all correspondence for the Michael Mara Show, it's P.O. Box 2796, Leesburg, Virginia, 20177. Uh, and we have to thank our man, Pony Boy. Who Yay, hasn't, Matt Bloom! He hasn't been around for all 1,000, but he's been around for a few hundred of them, and yeah. uh, he's been doing a great job. Thanks, and buddy. he fixed my computer today Yay! Yay, boy. you got any technical issues he's the man to contact ponyboy at michaelmarishow.com and our e-voice line is open 800-440-8167 give us a call rob thank you for a great 1000 thank oscar you. thank, thank you. you for a great 1000 i love you guys more you to too. come and lots of fun coming up have a great one. we'll be back tomorrow with a 1001 and then we're not going to count anymore uh, thank you very much so <laughs> bye long bye. everybody bye bye ciao ciao The Mike O'Mara Show is brought to you by Sleep Number. Find your Sleep Number setting today at any of the 425 Sleep Number stores nationwide. Find one near you by calling 800-511-0061. That number again is 800-511-0061. Don't forget to tell them that Mike O'Mara sent you. So many great people have been Well, you know, would you like to hear... Oh, my God. Mike O'Mara Radio Entertainment. <laughs>